What's up guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 28, returns down the back of our win over Sheffield United, top of the table just for now today. Gonna try and get through to the January window if we can, uh, play some massive games in the league, including the home to the Champions, Chelsea, Man City, Manchester United, Spurs, and we'll have Brighton in both the league and the EFL Cup quarterfinal if we get time for this one as well, gonna try and finish up around here I'd say. So yeah, loads to get through today, and the first game is indeed the Champions, Chelsea at home right now, top of the table just by a point after a decent start and was trying to pull away and get some separation today from the chasing pad. Big game to start off with, the champions at Anfield. Come on Liverpool. There's always something to be said for, you know, teams that aren't playing in Europe and wanting to challenge for either a Premier League title or a top four place. And Chelsea are a great example of this. Back in 2017 when they won the championship, a lot of people might forget this little fact, but they weren't playing in Europe because the season before they had a disastrous campaign, um, obviously, which culminated in a sacking mid-season as well as Alisson makes a great save. And I firmly believe that that really helped them, you know, with rest and recovery time to make a deeper challenge for a Premier League title and in the end go on to win it as well. That right now, as Alisson makes another smart save to his right, is probably our biggest bonus if you will there are no tuesday wednesday thursday night games to squeeze into the calendar they take their toll they all add up and right now is oh what a finish that is that is right now playing into our hands unfortunately goal down here our only loss so far has come here at anfield to Leeds. this might be our second to the champions okay robertson down the left last chance of the half go gap go left take it back Yes, come on! Very few chances in the half. We strike right before the break with a final kick. Third of the season for Curtis Jones. He's been a good pickup. And there we go. I'll take that. I'll take that. I say this all the time, but like when you're doing an RTG or a rebuild, you need to know when it's a good result against one of the better teams. Chelsea are the champions, man. They've got one of the best players in the world, Rodrigo. We sold him to Chelsea. This is a good point here, especially when we're training positions to battle back and get one. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah, draws will forever be considered subjective in the league, and that is a good point, in my opinion. You've got to know where you are, man. Like, we're not a Liverpool target in a Champions League. We're targeting a Champions League place. Uh, right, so following that, speaking of Chelsea, uh, Levi Colwell, uh, he's now got a high defensive work rate. So I did say what I'd do is I convert him to CB as soon as he's got that. Based on his stats, I'm expecting an overall spike. So I'd imagine he's going to go up to around 85 or possibly even 86 after the two weeks are done. Right, uh, following game, heading into this one here as we try and keep this unbeaten run going away at Old Traffic against Manchester United. Stumbling out of blocks a little bit right now in the bottom half of the table, but they're still one of the better teams in the division. So again, once again, away from home, I'd probably take a point, but only a win will send us back top. Come on, Liverpool. When I was a kid watching football, I say a kid, I would have been about 18 at this point, but um, Manchester United versus Liverpool was always one of my favourite games to watch as a neutral. Yeah, so enjoyable. Um, and there are so many classic games that stick out uh, over the years, and we just had another one added to it in the FA Cup. Uh, a couple of weekends ago. Um, so many brilliant, brilliant games and battles between the two of them as Luis Diaz fires in the opener and Liverpool lead right from kickoff. But the, the one game that I always come back to, you know, there's always like one game that kind of sticks out in your mind. I don't know why this is, but again, I was about 18 uh, watching this game. I think it was 2010, 2011. Manchester United won 3-2 at Old Trafford and Berbatov scored a hat-trick. And I, it always sticks out in my mind because I remember his game winner was a header. But I think it was either his first goal or it might be his second goal. Um, he... he basically overhead kicked the ball in off the crossbar and thanks to that camera angle of the centre circle it was the cameraman but, uh, but yeah he, he controlled the cross on the knee uh, and then he overhead kicked it in off the crossbar and, and Pepe Reina the reason why I remember it is because Pepe Reina was just stationary there's something about goals where a goalkeeper just doesn't move and he's just stationary and it was an unbelievable bit of technique Berbatov what a player man he might have been considered lazy by some but he certainly had elite technique and that game always sticks out in my mind I don't know why classic game and I'll see if I can find the highlights for you if you're uh, a little bit younger and may not, have, uh, may not have seen the game, it was a class game. I think Gerrard scored twice in that game as well. It was a great game and great start from Liverpool as well. Cody Gakpo for two. What a start. 
Liverpool 2 near up at Old Trafford. Cody Gagpo continues his red hot form. Yeah, it's been brilliant wins for both Liverpool against Manchester United and Manchester United against Liverpool. Yeah, never forget the 7 0 we saw. Was it last season or the year before? 7 0 at Anfield. It's, oh, Alisson, you've got to do better than that. Um, the uh, the game where Torres tore Vidic apart. This was, again, I think going back to about 2008, maybe. A long time ago, but Fernando Torres just ran rings around the manager of Vidic. Not an easy task for anyone to do. That was prime Fernando Torres, that. Uh, just some classic games over the years. And this one is shaping up to be one as well. Three goals in 30 minutes. Alisson should have done better there, but Manchester United right back in this. I would have, oh, yes, camera away, mate. As well. Oh, what a ball. Oh, what a build up. Robertson! Andy Robertson's first of the year. Liverpool restored a two goal cushion. What a build up. And for the first time, I actually finished a move. Normally, if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know it's a bit of a bit of a running joke, but it's like you'll see you'll see a nice orchestrated build up. And then I'll absolutely fluff to finish this time. Lovely finish by the weaker right foot of Andy Robertson. Liverpool lead by two once more. Rasmus dispossessed. And Musa dinks it through. Salah loses the aerial duel and stays down. And Rashford makes it 3-2. Double whammy. Mo stays down. And Rashford cuts the lead to one. I think I might take him off. He's still holding that calf. I think it was there. So I'll take Salah off, bring on, let's bring on, tell you what, let's bring on uh, Guerra and I'll push Ize up to the right hand side. Uh, so we'll get an extra CM on the pitch. So 26 minutes to go, still leading by one, but you know, we were talking about classic battles between these two. We've got another one here at Old Trafford. You might wonder why I didn't push Musa up to CM and bring on Ben McKenzie at right back, by the way. Uh, it's just because when you bring a player off the bench, there's not enough time. If you've brought them on, you know, around the hour mark or possibly later, there's not enough time for them to impact the game so significantly. Well, there is, but, you know, it's going to be hard for them to do that. Uh, to impact the game so significantly that their rating will be good enough. What normally happens is they'll come off the bench, they won't be able to do really much, and they end up with like a rating of like five, and that drags their average rating down. So it means that it's going to lead to slower growth because it counts towards the full medium uh, medi median uh, average rating of the player after a season. Anyway, 3 2. Uh, Manchester United pressing for a level up, and Allison makes the save. 12 to go. And uh, whilst I love the celebrations, guys, it ain't, it ain't done yet. That's got to do it, ref, surely. Come on, there we go. Yes, come on. Massive three points. Got a little bit nervy towards the end, but managed to hold on and claim a huge victory. First battle between Manchester United and us, and it's a win for Liverpool. So that means that now, I think we've gone top, I think. And after the game, we see Man City are indeed still top, but it's by a single goal. And if you would have given me this at the start of the season and said, this is where you'll finish, right now a third of the way through. But this is how we'd finish after 38 games. Second in the table, guaranteeing Champions League football and having the best defensive record. Yeah, I would have bitten your hand off at the start of the season. So I'm, I'm not mad at this start at all, man. Second place, this has been about as good as I could have hoped. But there's the cost on the back of the win. Salah, done, three months. He is going down. He is getting downgraded, but he still had a good start to the season. So that means now I think what I'll do is I'll move Eze up to the right-hand side, play him on that right wing, and I think I'll have Musa starting CM and McKenzie at right-back. Salah, done for three months. It's a big blow that for the veteran. Oh, and uh, we do see his word Levi Colwell. It was now ready to become a centre-half, so wait for this. We should see an overall spike of, I'd say, at least one or two. Seven clean sheets and 13. Great start for him. Uh, it's just a one. 85. But even so, 85 overall, 23 so He's got holds on all his attributes now after the position change. But I feel confident at his age, if he has a solid remainder of the first season, he'll, he'll continue to get better from next year onwards. I'm not... I'm not worried about this. The holds do mean slower growth. It was you guys that taught me this. The holds do mean slower growth, but it's not no growth ever again. It just means that, you know, it, they might need a year of good form to get back to uh, to consistent growth. Anyway, uh, following game, Wolves away at Molyneux Gary and Hillside. Tough starts to the season for them as we end to keep our unbeaten run going and possibly once again go top of the table. Come on, Liverpool. First serious injury coming this season. That, that might well be a... Uh, an injury for Salah that... Oh, it's a lovely build at this. 
Curtis Jones. Oh, puts it just wide. Might force him to consider maybe taking a step back now. I mean, possibly. You know, that, that sometimes does happen to senior players when their legs start to go a little bit. They, uh, they get a lot more tired, little knocks here and there. And sometimes a, uh, what you call like a midterm injury, if you will. And sometimes consider them to think, do you know what? Maybe, just maybe I need to consider how many more days I've got playing at the top. Even so, still nil nil here. But um, yeah, if we if we do want to stay in a title race, these are the games we must win away from home or not. It's got to be three points here. Yeah, well, thank you, thank you. And McKenzie looking for Eze. He'll find him. Keep running. Oh, go on, Ben. Offloads. Diaz. Yes, come on. I think that's a fourth assist already for Ben McKenzie, man. And Liverpool lead. 11 after the restart. Diaz with another. And the Colombian fires us in front. Okay. All right. Some of the games we won recently have only been by a goal. In fact, I think I think I lost four in the league half. So if we only win this game by a goal, so be it. Our defense is the best in the division right now. So really, it feels like if we get if we get the lead, if we go one goal up, we feel confident of seeing it out. This might well just be another game. Oh, no. Surely not. Surely not. Surely not. Oh, Alisson, what a save. What a save, Alisson. And... Robertson and Moose have blocked the cross. Ah, that's going to do it. And Alisson, the vet, gives us the three points at the death. One of those games where I was under no pressure whatsoever until the very last attack. Often can be the way. It's why I always say, never feel comfortable sitting on a one-goal lead. But when you've got one of the best goalkeepers in the world like Alisson, you know he might bail you out when required. He's just done that. Louisville escape with the three points. Right now, he continues to lead the way in the race for the Golden Gloves. Well, are we, are we on top now? Or are Man City continuing to win and win and win? No, they're continuing to win and win and win. So, they've now taken a plus three goal difference gap. They're away at Bramwell Lane, though. I expect them to win that game, too. We'll advance through just to see if the Blaze did take points off. No, they won once again. So, if we are to keep pace with them, we'll need to beat Middlesbrough at home. So, yep, following game, diving right into it. The Borough, Michael Carrick side at Anfield going for our third straight win in a row in the league and staying pace with the front runners, Manchester City. Come on, Liverpool. Middlesbrough is such a great team for an RTG, by the way. If you want to start in the second tier with some good young players like Isaiah Jones and Hayden Hackney, they've got their real stadium, the Riverside in the game, strong rivalries with North East sides, including when you get to the Premier League, Newcastle United as well. Uh, great, great team for a uh, for a championship RTG, and uh, certainly one to consider if you're looking for a new project for this spring. Anyway, uh, nine minutes in here, still 0-0. Uh, is this game being played on the Wednesday night? So a bit of rotation, but still a very strong lineup. And Diaz rolls it across, and Gakpo. Oh, what a save! And oh, I don't believe it. We're starting to get some luck now, and about blooming time. How many times throughout the course of this year's FC have you seen me concede some ridiculous goals, concede goals that are deep into stoppage time that have just absolutely infuriated me, but I've kept on using this mantra, luck will balance itself out. This is what you get if you don't lose your discipline. It's an own goal, it's a poor one, Liverpool in front. Yeah, I'm getting some serious luck right now. I mean, you think about two years ago. Do you remember two seasons ago when we scored three own goals that were um, passbacks? Do you remember in the same season we had three passback own goals? It was ridiculously lucky, but that old saying of luck will ban it itself out goes both ways. That was a wonderful build-up, and I really should have finished it. Even so, yep, luck, luck, luck goes both ways, and it does indeed balance itself out. So now I'd say the pendulum has shifted from me being quite unlucky to me being very lucky, which means you know that the pendulum now is going to fall in the favour of the AI. I'm prepared for it. It's only fair. That's just McKenzie. All day, all day. And Cole Will gets it out of his feet. No! Oh! Keeper beating all ends up. It was never getting back on time. Off the top of the crossbar. Closest we've came in a few years. Levi Cole will so close to being the chosen one. I feel like the things that are helping me get a little bit closer is being slightly behind the halfway line. So around where Jones is here. But also not, not coming at it from straight on. Being at a slight angle as well uh, is helping me get a little bit closer. And why I am starting to get a bit closer in terms of my ratio 
in uh, in recent attempts. I love how like I'm starting to you know gain a strategy for this. Do you know what I mean? I haven't scored one since <laughs> for for a decade, and now I'm starting to formulate a strategy. I don't think that's how it works, man. Like I don't think you can have a strategy on something when you haven't done it in ten years. It's like me giving advice on long-term relationships. Yeah, we do have fun on this channel, don't we? We do have fun. That's the most important thing. And a uh, good episode today as well. Some, some really good games. Lovely goals. We're only halfway through. Oh, that's a wonderful goal as well. It's a wonderful, wonderful goal. And Luis Diaz wraps it up with a dagger. 18 to go, but that is going to do it. Liverpool are going to make it three wins on the trot in the league and keep pace with Manchester City. Lovely team goal, that lovely move, lovely build-up and lovely finish by the Colombian as well. Game over. Reds will get another big win. No losses in seven in the league and a chance to go top for at least 24 hours before Manchester City play tomorrow afternoon. Brighton, tough game away on the south coast though. Come on, Liverpool. Colwell spins and there we go, there we go. And again, oh my, and again, it's doing it at an angle and being just behind the halfway line. Not like dead on it, if you will. Uh, as Carl Rushworth... Bit of a, uh, an icon in our Swansea career mode early this year. Oh, he's not going to save that one. What a header. And a first in red for Levi Colwell. But if he can't score for the halfway line, he can with his head from inside the area. And Liverpool have the lead. Oh, great header from Colwell. And he's had a fantastic start since coming in as well. Other than the one game against, I want to say Arsenal, where he conceded two penalties. He's been really solid. He's beaten three Blue and white shirts in the air there to head it past Carly into the top corner. What a signing he's looking like from Brentford. I'm just remembering, I forgot to show respect with Levi Colwell after that goal. Obviously spent a year on loan with Brighton. As Cody Gakpo makes it two. And the top scorer in the league continues his fantastic start to the season. And I know Brighton would have loved him back permanently, but I'm glad we've got him instead. He gets his first, Cody Gakpo gets his first today of many for the season. Liverpool two goals up on the south coast, and I think this is probably going to see us get another big win and go top by three points for at least 24 hours. Yep, we don't need to win the title this year, but if we can stay in a title race, that is going to be a fantastic first year with the Reds in rebuild mode. So let's pull through with Conate. Oh, no. Oh, wow. What a goal. Mukoko, who right now is at Brighton. Never won the race for the Wonder Kid. has just scored a sensational goal. And our clean sheet has gone. Look at that. On the chest. Holds off Conate. Puts him on the floor. And then volleys it past Alisson. Mike, some of the goals today have been really nice. As you see, if it gives Brighton a glimmer of hope. But I think that's all it will be. Hopefully. Yep. Just a consolation goal. Indeed. Liverpool hold on. So our clean sheet run might have ended after two. But... Our winning run continues and it's four straight in the league. So what we'll do is go back to the main menu and we'll see if the champions Chelsea hold Manchester City tomorrow. Everson just held Bournemouth, so thank you very much, Sean Dyche. We'll quickly do one advance in the calendar and fingers crossed, fingers crossed, heading into the game against them will be top. Yes, we are indeed. Chelsea, the champions with the win, which means that going into that top two clash, we will be top. And if we win, we'll go six clear as well. But long way to go. And obviously this is, I would still say, even after Chelsea won the Champions last season, the best team in England. So yeah, following again, let's just dive straight into it. Battle between the top two. Early title clash here in Anfield. And my first game as Liverpool manager against Manchester City. The new era of the rivalry. It's not Klopp versus Guardiola anymore. It's Dox versus Guardiola. Will there be mutual respect? Or will Pep look to best me in our first meeting and show no respect at all? First game between us and Man City. Let's get a massive win here and go six points clear. Come on, Liverpool. Do we just have an injury for Jarrell? We did indeed. I did wonder if Jarrell, he, he was slow to get... It was one of those where the player's slow to get up and you're like, right, is this just a, an annoying animation or is it an actual injury? It is unfortunately the latter. So we're already missing Salah. Now jarrell has gone down. And it's going to be hard for him on a knock to be dealing with Haaland for an entire second half. So I might have to take him off. Still tied at 0-0. Done a good job defensively in the first half. As KDB pegs it back. Rodri shot. Save away, Allison. But we haven't created anything on the offensive end. As things stand, eight to go. He's trying to stay at 0 0 before the, uh, until the break. So far, so good on keeping Erling Haaland quiet. Only 10 minutes into the second half, though. Just haven't had anything on the offensive end. That's the problem. Just have not. Man City's midfield, I've just not been able to get past it. Rodri, in particular, has been absolutely sensational, as he often is. 
And oh, good tackle by Colwell as he was lining up to shoot. He, I've said this before and I'll say it once again. In my opinion, he'll never get the credit as certain superstars in global football. But in my opinion, he is one of the absolute most integrals. Diaz puts his man on the floor there and just couldn't get it past Kevin De Bruyne. Well, in terms of rival battles, I have to say, I was so excited for this one, man. My first game against what you consider the favourites, if not the champions. And in the end, not really much to report. But I'll often say this. Draws are subjective. Sometimes bad results, sometimes good results. I don't think anyone's going to turn their nose up at a goalless draw against Manchester City. I, I will take that. Chelsea did beat West Ham, so they'll cut the gap on us at the top. But it does mean we'll remain top at least heading into that Cow Record final. How bad was the injury for Jarrell? Oh, sprained knee. So he's going to miss uh, the, uh, the final games in December. And he's also going to miss the start of January as well. So that means he'll miss the, uh, the Carrick quarter final. West Ham away. So like, who have we got in the FA Cup third round? Oh, Merseyside Derby. FA Cup. Always a good one. Man City away at the Etihad. Chelsea. Oh, that's a massive injury for Jarrell Hato, that. But um, at least his uh, clean sheet helps us see out a big point. Right, following game, uh, Brighton in the Carabao Cup at home. Just beat them away in the league and a big win here will send us into the final four of the EFL Cup. I said this season I would like at least one trophy. Whilst it doesn't count towards the objectives, you know I would certainly take it. If you want to win it, go against the semi-finals first. Let's get a big win here and make the final four. Come on, Liverpool. I've got a few starters out there tonight. Curtis Jones, Andy Robertson, Luis Diaz. I say this a lot, but like for me, the EFL Cup is a competition where it's like that the further I go, the more serious I take it, you know. First round, if I get knocked out, eh, not bothered. But, um, you know, if I get to the semis, you know I'm going to start targeting the silverware come the end of the competition. As Diaz finds Afina Jan, who, oh, he's denied by a good stop by Steele. Yep, it's got to that stage now where I'm starting to take it a lot more seriously. I need to start a petition as well for EA to start adding it in towards the objectives. Because I, I think it should count. If you win it, the board shouldn't look at it and go, who cares? No. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, like I said this so many times, like it's not it's not the most coveted of trophies. But whilst it is still a major competition, it should still be considered worthy of winning. There's Mukoko. Rolls it through. Oh, lovely through ball. And a finish pass Kelleher by Sarmiento. Brighton. Strike first, 19 minutes in at Anfield. Tariq Lamptey shut down by Endo. Great work by the vet. Diaz, Lux, excellent ball. Just couldn't squirm it through. And Brighton shall clear as we're still down by one. We're play plenty of game to go, though. Not panicking. As Barry next year must finish. And does. Drills it in first of the season for the Spaniard. Liverpool find their level to 32 minutes in. Pfeiffer. Tackled by Guerra. Back to Musa. So it's still tied at 1-1, slowing the pace down here. Got the level, I don't need to attack with as much intensity. Just look for a better clear-cut chance. Lovely ball by Javi Guerra. And wait for the... Now we're covering defender. Come across and Athena Jan. Second time of the game, I've stepped inside of him. And Steele has, uh, has made, made the save. Still, still tied at 1-1, but that, that goal is coming. Despite falling behind, we've been the better team. And the lead, the lead is coming. And there's another. It's Athena Jan that's just gone down as well. As Musa is denied. Yet another injury. And this time it's our, uh, our number nine. Sending for the big dog off the bench. I don't particularly want to have to bring him on. But I've done so. Cody Gakpo replacing the injured Athena Jan. 18 to go. Can either team prevent Pens and win this? Good block, Danilo. And away we go. Ben Doak. Play advantage please, ref. I see Robertson on the overlap. And in the middle, I've got two red shirts. One is Cody. Keep running. Go on. Gagpo! Yes, what a finish! Off the bench! And it only take, takes him about six, seven in-game minutes to get possibly the game winner. Cody to the rescue. Not for the first time this season, but the first time in the EFL Cup. I think that is us into the Final Four. Yeah, I said, man, like, the, the further you go in this competition, like, the more you start to take it seriously. Like, if this if this is the first round we entered, I would have been like, eh, go down. If we go out, we go out. Put it this way, if it's the first round, I wouldn't be bringing Cody Gakpo off the bench to help us complete the turnaround. But because the semi-finals are at stake, that is when we start to take it 
more seriously. Gakpo off the bench delivers the winner. And we shall see who we've got in the semi-finals. Now, it is an all-EFL tie between Peterborough United and Forest Green Rovers at London Road. So, fingers crossed, it'll be them and not one of Arsenal, Bournemouth, Newcastle United or Crystal Palace who remain. So, here we go. We should do one advance. And in the final four, we'll be taking on... It's, it's Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace must have knocked out Newcastle, which they did on pens. And Bournemouth will be taking on Forest Green Rovers. I think the winners of us and Crystal Palace will face our former team in the final. Big incentive to get there now. Bring on Glasner's side. Oh, and how about his injury for Athena Jan? Another four-week injury as well. So, goodness gracious. Players starting to drop like flies right now. Thankfully, this one, not, not as big of a deal uh, with him being a backup striker. But still, with games coming thick and fast, big cup games to come and big league games too... Of course, you don't want players to be down, that's for sure. Right, let's, uh, let's try and squeeze in a couple more today. Uh, following game, West Ham away. And this, this will get to the halfway stage. We do two more. West Ham and Spurs. Let's start off with the Irons away at London Stadium. We're a win. Again, could possibly send us six points clear here on Boxing Day. That's the late Christmas present I want. Let's go get it. Come on, Liverpool. Kwanzaa. He's going to see a bit more game time now with the injury to Jarrell Hato. I, I've said this, like, Kanate's not starting this game either. For some reason, he's always tired. I don't know why. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but he's always tired, so it means that with Jarrell going down, yeah, Kwan's, Kwan's going to get a bit more game time now, and I'm excited to see whether he's uh, worth the fee we paid to bring him back from Napoli. Cody Gakpo almost gets another one in his quest for the goal. Oh, terrible touch. Diaz run. Oh, and Areola once again. Two big saves in succession from Alphonse, and once again, oh my goodness, how have we not punished West Ham for that? It's going to be all spent all day, all day, all day. There we go. Oh, really well done from the kid. And this is what I said about Eze, man. It's like the one thing he doesn't have is blistering base. He's quick enough. As Diaz takes it on early and Alphonse pushes it behind for a corner. But he's not going to be quick enough to just get away. Do you know what I mean? He's got a bit of pace. Can come in handy, but when it's from a deeper position... Oh, not quite as uh, useful as someone with that lightning quick pace, you know? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, what a tackle, Ben. The kid. <laughs> Ensuring we'll see out a point. Okay, not a great result. Back-to-back -back goalless draws in the league. And they need to start winning at some point. But again, it's West Ham away. It's not, it's not a terrible result in the grand scheme of things. What a tackle by Ben at the end there. And just briefly on Eze as well. That's why I'm thinking, actually, what I might do is abandon the initial plan to change him to a winger and just ask him to improve his defensive capabilities. Because, again, he, he can defend. He's not useless on defense. You know, he's got a bit of strength. He's got OK stand tackling as well. But if we convert him to CM, it will take a crazy amount of time for him to become one. He may never become one. But I say this often. Sometimes when you're changing a player's position, they don't have to be a natural in that position. You can just focus on those defensive stats by training him there. But it doesn't mean he's going to become one. It just means if you look at the development plans here, there's nothing that can improve those defensive stats like putting him on a certain development plan can. They don't need to be retrained to that. It just trains those attributes up and it makes them more beneficial for whatever, whatever role they're playing in your system. Right, let's do one more game today. Our final one, it is Spurs heading into this one. No wins in our last two league games. Back-to-back -back clean sheets is nice, but if we do want to stay top of the table, we've got to keep or get, get back to winning ways. Spurs, our final game today. Let's close out with a big three points and stay top of the table at the halfway stage. Come on, Liverpool. Miguel Gutierrez. Almeria fan favourite, rolls it through, there's Young min Son. Konate dragged that position, Ben McKenzie coming back. As the South Korean winger steps inside, finds Marcus Taram, great save by Allison and clear by Curtis Jones. First chance falling to the son of Lillian, excellent stop. And we remain tied at 0-0. And I know I keep saying this, draws are subjective. And against a good Spurs side, I would take a point and clean sheet here. Yeah, we've got the best defensive record in the division. And I'd quite like to continue that, to be honest. Have another clean sheet here. Oh, look at the space for Robson. Tons of space to whip across in. And Diaz! You can't give Andy Robertson that sort of space. Acres of it. Absolutely acres. As he whips it in and Diaz heads home. It's not any one of the new boys that have arrived here at Liverpool. It's two of the old guard that combine. 
And the Reds are in front. Well, I'll some. Look at the space here for Andy Robertson. Oh, Max, come on, mate. You've got to show more effort on the, on the defensive end there and close him down. Diaz head time. Liverpool lead. 13 minutes to go. Not a classic, but that's all the time that separates us from a win. Oh, Max Aarons wins a free kick there after a blistering show of pace down the left. Javi Guerra had no option but to bring him down. It's just going to be a book, and I can already tell by the animation. But... Ten to go. Can we close this out? Ooh. Just got to grind this out here. One final chance for Spurs with a minute to go. Got to get it forward. Bissouma. Backwards. No, that's got to do it. Ref, come on. Yes, come on. If you've got to grind out a 1-0 to win football games, so be it. Not the first time we've done it this season. It won't be the last. And he's at the halfway stage. We officially will be top of the table. Massive win against one of the chasing back. Yep, it means at the official halfway stage, we are indeed in pole position by three points clear of Manchester City. Best defensive record in the division. We're only 12 conceded in 19 games and only one loss. That, of course, coming at home to Leeds United. Free clear of Manchester City. And, of course, we faced them next to the Etihad as well to kickstart January. So that is going to be a massive, massive contest there at the Etihad. Newcastle United and Bournemouth wrap up the top four of our Arsenal, Spurs and Chelsea in the Europa and Europa Conference League spots. The other teams in the top 10 are Leeds United, Aston Villa and Manchester United. And in the bottom three right now, it is Nottingham Forest, West Ham and Luton Town who are rock bottom. And as for the individual stats this season, after a red-hot start for Cody Gakpo, only two goals and eight. Season dropped to fifth in the scoring charts, but only three behind the leader, Erling Haaland with 16 and 19. Dominic Solanke is the reason why Bournemouth are having such a great season. I've said that before, right now in second. As you see, also Jack Clark is there with eight this season as well I have to say for next year if we're in the Champions League and Bournemouth aren't I'm going to try and bring them both in uh, Marcus Turam is leading the way in the race to assist title Cody Gakpo and KDB are only one behind there though so that's nice to see but as for the race to the Golden Glove Allison is dominating he's got six more than both Edison and Vicario with 12 in 19 looking to equal that famous Petta check record but that'll do it for today's episode of the realistic career guys so massive thank you for watching if you have enjoyed it and if you have enjoyed today's episode please drop a like you'll have a fantastic day i'll return next one with massive games in the league against the favorites the champions we'll have the FA Cup third round merseyside derby home to everton and we'll have both legs of the FA Cup semi-final against the Championship side crystal palace and we'll play for the whole of january window as well where we might make some new signings too have a fantastic day much love and i'll see you for the next episode very soon